Welcome to the Happy Black Woman Podcast, where we're on a mission to empower women to transform their lives through personal development and entrepreneurship. We bring you all the information, inspiration, and motivation you need to create a life of happiness, success, and freedom. Now, please welcome your host, the happy black woman herself, Rosetta Thurman. Hello, ladies. It's Rosetta. Welcome back to the Happy Black Woman podcast. I am so delighted that you are here with me today on another episode, another amazing conversation. And before we dive into it, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have rated and reviewed our show on iTunes. It has been so wonderful reading your comments and having you help us spread the word about the show. So if you have not done so yet, but you've been meaning to do it, go over to iTunes and give us a rating and a review so that other women can easily find the Happy Black Woman podcast on Apple. All right. Now we get to jump into a beautiful conversation that we haven't really had on the show before. And our guest today is Sanaya Williams. And it was funny, we were just talking about how we met. Sanaya and I have actually never met in person, which is is unusual for guests on the show. But I have heard so much about Sanaya from women you have heard on the show, Dr. Venus Opo-Reese and Kwanisha Green, who we interviewed last year as well. And you know, sometimes people, people that you admire connect you with other people that they think you should know. And I always listen to that. So that is how we got Sanaya on the show. And so welcome, Sanaya. Thank you for having me here. So glad that we're able to connect. We were just saying that, man, we've never talked, but this is like our talk that's being recorded in front of, you know, all these thousands of people. We get to kind of chat. And Sanaya, what I've heard so much, and this is so great for all of you listening, because you know you have a great reputation when everyone's talking about you. Sanaya has a reputation for being great at systems and team, uh, building your team and all those different things that entrepreneurs, especially black women entrepreneurs are not good at, you know, we just, we want to do our work. We want to serve people, but mm, all this other stuff is not our strength. So that's why I'm excited to have you here, Sanaya. So for everyone that has not heard of you, tell us who you are and what you do. (laughs) Yes. So I, (laughs) I do all the things that everybody doesn't want to do in their business, all the things behind the scenes, the operations, things like that. My passion is really helping people find solutions, figuring things out and making it easy. My background is I worked in the financial banking world and I designed a lot of systems that you probably use today, like ATM rebates and how you pay your bills online. I designed how a lot of those systems worked and then worked with the customer service teams at the banks I worked at to kind of deliver an excellent customer experience to our clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Customer service is super important to me as well, but I love literally getting in the weeds, figuring things out and making it easy for people. Cause the whole saying, you know, work smarter, not harder is Mm -hmm. true. I'm always trying to figure out the easy way to get things done. (laughs) Beautiful. I love it. I love it. And so you have a great background and it's like technical and it's like figuring how things can work better for people. What do you do now? How do you help entrepreneurs now? Right. So now I do everything that surrounds team development. I help people take a lot of the processes of what you do in your business today. A lot of it's usually in the entrepreneur's head. So you do things in your business every single day and the steps are all in your head. So essentially I help people take those steps out of their head and create what I like to call playbooks so that when you have a team or if you have a team now, they can execute those plays for you instead of you having to do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. So we help do what I like to call seamless systems. We create seamless systems in entrepreneurs' businesses and also help you hire and train your team. Mm. So we do that in multiple different ways. Like we can do it for you. And then there's some people that want to learn how to do it themselves. So we have a program that we help people actually train and hire their team themselves. Beautiful. I love it. How did you end up doing that? Like, how did you end up going from your career to actually doing this as a business for other entrepreneurs? Very, (laughs) yeah. So I got to a point where I was working. I mean, in the banking world, especially in New York, you work, there's no such thing as a 40 hour week. I was lucky if I worked 60 hours a week. I was doing a lot of traveling and I knew that it just wasn't what I wanted to do forever. The real kicker was I wanted, I know that when I had kids, I wanted to be home. I wanted to be able to be with my daughter, who I have now, she's five months. 
So I'm very glad and happy that I did make the switch. Mm. But I knew that when I was in the banking world, I would not be able to envision picking my kid up from school or being home with them to send them off to school. So that was kind of the shift for me in terms of, I got to find something different. This is not the end all be all for me. And I kind of transitioned. I somehow got my boss, had a a lovely conversation to get him to allow me to go part-time while I tried to figure out my business in terms of figuring out what I wanted to do and how I could make money on my own. And once I was able to do that, I would work part-time in, I was a TD Ameritrade and worked part-time there for about nine months. And then I made the transition to my business full-time. I was able to replace my income doing that. Beautiful. I love that story. And I just love that you had the the vision of the life that you wanted and you really just created a process by which you could do that. And now you get to be home with your baby and you're living in London now, which is so cool. How did you end up in London? I'm very curious about that. Oh, (laughs) the London story. So I always tell people that love brought me to London. (laughs) My now husband, he's British. We met in New York, but he's born and raised and has always lived in in the UK. Mm -hmm. And I was going back and forth for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And after we got married, it was, he was not, because he's in banking now. And the lifestyle over here is completely different than the lifestyle in New York. Mm -hmm. They actually enjoy life in Europe. Mm -hmm. They get 35 vacation days. (laughs) Oh, beautiful. I know. They just, they enjoy life. So he's like, I will never work in in, in America. That's not going to happen. So love brought me to London. That's amazing. I love Europe and I just love that you get to do your business from anywhere, which is a big theme that we have on this show where we definitely get to travel with our businesses. But to also live in another country is a beautiful experience, not just for you, but for your baby who's going to grow up with all these different experiences. I love it. Yeah, no, it's definitely great because my husband just accepted a job in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. So we're making a move. We're going to live there for a couple years while we can, while my daughter's still young and before Mm -hmm. she actually goes to school. So we're headed there at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I I love the fact that I'm able to work from anywhere. My office can be wherever I take my computer and we just start it up and go kind of thing. So yeah. (laughs) So cool. So cool. I just, to underscore your story for everyone listening, this is what I mean when, you know, I'm always talking about the fact that you have to um, develop your vision and know what you want and then take action to go for it. And it's just another example of a woman who has done that. There's nothing that you can imagine that's not possible. And a lot of times it happens faster than you think. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Well, Sanaya, uh, we are just so curious to know, everyone listening, what systems do we need to have in our business? You you work with so many different entrepreneurs. Like for someone who's just starting out with nothing, it's like, what is a system? (laughs) What what kind of system should I have? Like. (laughs) team, you know, I am the team, you know? So for the women listening who are just getting started with this concept of getting help as a black woman entrepreneur, what are, you know, three ways we could get started or three simple tips that you can give us to jumpstart us in, in this area? Yeah. So the biggest thing I would say, number one is to first, even if you are in your business by yourself, start creating your list. Like start just writing down everything that you do. It's so natural to you because you've been doing it since you started your business, but create those lists because you will get to a point where you just want to bring somebody on, even if it's a couple hours a week. So my first assistant, I hired her six months after I started my business and literally she was only working for me five hours a week. And I think I was paying her 15 to between 15 and $20 an hour. And we had this process in place where, because I had a budget, (laughs) I was working part-time and I was trying to make this business work. So I had a budget and I could, knew I only could afford to pay her five hours a week. So our process was when you spent and got through your three hours, let me know so I can prioritize the work for the next two, or I can look and see if I can pay you more to get all of it done. Mm. So the way I was able to work best with her was I was writing down everything I was doing 
And then when she came on board, I literally said, here, this is this is your job. Just follow the follow the list and Mm -hmm. we'll be able to get everything done. And a lot of people fear doing it or feel like they don't need to do it because you're a business of one. Mm -hmm. But it's even more important for you to do it when you're a business of one, because you're then getting ready for the growth stage of your life and your business for whenever you have that person that you can, it's like plug and play. Yeah. Yeah. I love that tip. And I did not heed that in the beginning and it really hurt me in the long run. My first hire, you know, my first team member was an intern. I hired an intern and, you know, some people say, oh, I can get free interns from the university, but I believe in paying people because, Mm -hmm. you know, someone's working for free. It really is hard to expect them to be somewhere at a certain time and, you know, do certain things the way you want them done. So, I paid an intern. I think I paid 10 to $12 an hour and I recruited from everywhere, from universities, from my network and everything. And I didn't have anything written down. So, so part of her job was writing things down, helping me get things written down so that, you know, we could start having an operations manual. And it wasn't until years later that I actually had something that I could hand over to a virtual assistant. So that is really great advice. And also just underscoring the fact that you don't have to, when we talk about team and hiring, people think that you mean a full-time person and that is not the case. Five hours a week, I think all of us could use that, you know, five hours a week getting, you know, from the beginning and having things written down and give that person would be so powerful for so many of you listening. Great tip. I think also the other thing is a mindset shift because a lot of people look at hiring or a team member, even if you bring in an intern or just having to pay someone else, they look at it as an expense. Whereas I like to tell people to look at that as an investment. It's like, it's not costing you. It's like, what is this person that's coming onto your team going to afford you? Imagine getting back five hours Mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. Now, In that five hours, think about how many prospecting calls you could do or networking events you can go to. And if you were able to get one client a week, that would, I'm sure, pay for the five hours that you're paying for your virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great mindset shift that I think a lot of us have to make. And especially in the (laughs) beginning when everything seems like, you know, an expense and you just want to bootstrap everything yourself. But it's like what I tell my clients when I tell them they need to get an email marketing service and they're like, oh, AWeber is 20 bucks a month. And it's like, (laughs) well, you're paying that money to send emails that are going to bring you clients who are going to pay you $1,000, $5,000. So, you know, it's a very small drop in the bucket for what's possible for you. So it's definitely a mindset shift to think about what you're going to gain versus what you're going to lose. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing, is around actual systems and tools that entrepreneurs need. I've met so many people that go to networking events and they take those business cards and they stick them in a drawer. Mm. It's Mm -hmm. like you're putting money in a drawer Mm -hmm. because you're not following up. So I always like to say the first system you need in place in your business is definitely a follow-up system, a Mm -hmm. CRM or some form of way that is going to help you easily follow up with your contacts. Mm -hmm. So a lot of clients starting out use a tool called Contactually, or there's less annoying, just some small CRM, some small client relationship management tool that's going to help you connect with people. Okay. The first one you mentioned was called Contractually? Contactually. Contactually. Okay. Yeah. Contact U-A-L-L-Y, essentially. Okay. And what was the other one? It's less annoying CRM. Okay. That's a cool name. (laughs) Yeah, because we want things that aren't complicated and going to scare you away. Mm -hmm. So find tools that you actually try and test and like so that you're not spending money on something that's overly complicated that you're never going to use. Right. Right. Well, we'll put those links in the show notes for people. They can click and see if either of those would work for you. And I love contactually because what it does is it connects to your social media and it connects to your email and it gives you reminders of when you need to be reaching out with so-and-so, this new contact. You haven't talked to this person in 90 days. You should follow up with them. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives you a list of things to follow up with and you can track your full conversation in there. So for me, when I have 
I do a lot of my sales through referrals. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of relationships that Mm -hmm. I then have conversations that we follow up and follow up on. And I pull up the system and I look in there and I see what our past conversation is. And clients are surprised that you remember these things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I keep notes in there and then I'm reviewing them. And it's really a way of how I close and keep relationships with my clients. Yeah, that's awesome. I love those tools. So really having, writing down our processes and procedures, and then, you know, looking for some help are great ways to start keeping track of of our networking and everything with those tools. Great tips. I want to go back to what you were sharing about hiring someone, even for a few hours a week. Where would you recommend that someone find a part-time team member like that? Sure. So looking for a part-time team member, virtual assistant, definitely if you look on, say, even in Facebook, there's a ton of different virtual assistant communities that you can post and look for someone. The thing is, you have to be super clear on what you're looking for. So I like to have people simply go through and create, we go back to creating a list, but it's like what I call a delegation checklist. So what are you going to have this person do so that you're looking for the right fit for your team? And then create a simple job description because the person or wherever you're going to post this, they're going to want to have an overview of what they're going to do before they can say they're actually available to do it. They're going to want to know how many hours it's going to take and exactly what you want them to get done. So create that delegation checklist is what I call it. And then just create a short, simple, clear job description that you can take and post on different Facebook groups for virtual assistants. Even in your own community, you can probably find someone that already knows you, already knows your brand. That's also a good place to look. And believe it or not, I found my first VA on Craigslist. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, it sounds like when you put, when you put it out there, you know, you get all these different possibilities and opportunities versus right now you're looking at all this work that can't be done, but when you finally put it out there, you're able to get back all these people who can help you and then you get to pick. And then it's like, it's like Christmas time. It's like, Oh, look at all these gifts I can open. (laughs) Will it be her? Will it be him? Will it be? And, and you get all these possibilities. And what I've found to be so great is that people bring even more than the job description to the role because they bring new ideas, new ways of doing things, and just really humbles you that you're not the smartest person in your business all the time. (laughs) It's so surprising because they come with fresh eyes. So I talk about creating processes and playbooks and all that, but processes grow with your business. And every time I have a new team member join my team, our processes get updated because they come with fresh eyes to the business Mm -hmm. and they help me even open my eyes and say, Hey, that's a great idea. Why weren't we doing that a long time ago? Mm -hmm. But because I'm so close to it, we haven't kind of changed or updated or kind of looked at new ways in my business to do things. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when I go into clients' businesses, I see a whole bunch of different things that they can be doing, but the client doesn't see it because they're so close to it. So it's always good to have some fresh eyes come into your business. Yeah, totally. Well, those were all really great tips in terms of helping us, you know, start to streamline our systems. What about, do you have any tips for those of us who, who started, you know, doing some of this stuff and then it's like time to go to the next level? Like if that's like the baby steps, what's like the intermediate? What's one thing that you see people who they've got some systems in place, but they're ready to go to the next level and maybe delegate more. What's like the number one thing that you're always telling those people? <laughs> I'm always telling those people that have team. It's It seems like the people who, like we said, are just starting, they're afraid to hire or get the mindset to actually spend the money on hiring someone. Then you have the people that have people, but they don't want to let go of the work. <laughs> ah, uh-huh. I have been that person many, many times until I'm in so much pain about it that I just <laughs> say, here, do it yourself, do it your way. I don't care anymore. (laughs) Yeah. So it's more about building trust Mm -hmm. in that team member so that you're not holding it all in and you're actually giving them more work to get done. And so for say the more advanced person or the person with a team, it's really about going back and looking at 
different tools that you can have in place to work better and build your, what I call high performance team. So looking at say your Asana or your teamwork PM, whatever project management tool you're using or how you're communicating with your team, how can you communicate better? How do you manage your projects better? I'll give you an example. On my team, we use a method called Scrum for managing our projects. Mm. And so we have 20 minute meetings every morning to kind of get the team going, review what happened yesterday, review what they need to get done today, and kind of review what blocks they're having Mm -hmm. in terms of getting their tasks done. Mm -hmm. And so that helps me because I then can get everything out the way in the morning and I'm not the roadblock for anybody else on the team. Mm -hmm. That's great. Scrum. I know I've heard that before, but I I didn't really catch on to it. Like, what, what is that? So having, it's basically a a very short morning meeting where you can get everybody on the same page. And for those of us who have team and it's like, oh, we have virtual assistants and they just, you know, submit their hours at the end of the week and they get things done. But there might be that thing on Friday that's like, man, if I could have given them what they needed on Tuesday, it could have been done already versus, you know, going into the next week. Right, exactly. And it's really about, figuring out ways to work better with your team, especially Mm -hmm. if you're all virtual. Like I have people on my team that have been with me for three more years and we've never met. Mm -hmm. We do like (laughs) Zoom and I've seen them and we have great relationships because I trust them with my business, Mm -hmm. but I've never met them and Mm -hmm. we talk every day, but I built this trust in them through our work and we communicate really well. So when you get to that level of you have team, it's really about building that trust and that communication with team members. That's kind of the next step once you hire your team. Yeah, very cool. And you mentioned something else. You mentioned project management tools. I yes. really did not like project management tools. I don't like, that's not how I work. So I was like, well, how am I going to use this for my team? And then last year we started using teamwork. And so can you talk a little bit about the value of that for people like me who are like, oh, I don't <laughs> want to use that. I like my list. And why can't everybody just use list? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, not another something I have to actually open every morning. And yeah, check. Mm-hmm. yeah, I have I have clients like that. So teamwork is a project management tool and I love it. I have lots of clients that use it and we use it as well. And it really helps give an overview of what's happening in the project, what's happening in your business as a whole. So we use it to actually run our team meetings. All Mm -hmm. of our projects are in there and it gives us one thing that may sound good to you. We do a lot of commenting in there. So I have less emails in my inbox. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I get enough emails from outside of my company that I don't need more from the people inside the company. Right. So we have a rule where if you're asking about a project or asking about tasks, put it in teamwork because then it'll definitely get addressed. Mm-hmm. And for me, with everything that I have going on and the time difference between myself and members of the team, I set in my calendar like two, three times a day that I go in and check teamwork to kind of address questions and comments, things like that. So again, I'm not the bottleneck in our projects. It's wonderful. I love that. And yes, that is an upside to using these project management systems that you have less email because I do not like email. (laughs) people. The best way to not get a response from me is to send it via email. (laughs) So great, great, great. Well, okay. Now I want to be nosy because, you know, you're the person that's helping other entrepreneurs their systems and their teams, so they can become more productive. How do you stay productive and focus in your own business? You know, are there any strategies or tools or apps that you use that really keep you on track? Yeah, the the biggest thing that keeps me on track, there's a, a few things, but the number one thing is my calendar. I, I like live and die by my calendar. If it's not on my calendar, it usually doesn't happen. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I put everything in there. The other thing is I use also a, like a paper planner mm-hmm. where I use my kind of Sunday evenings. I take an hour, maybe two hours to kind of plan out the week. And this is like for business and for home mm-hmm. and just plan out what's happening in my life, what, what's happening with my daughter, what's happening with my husband in case like we're having people over for dinner. I can prepare for that. <laughs> and then it kind of goes in my calendar. And that's how I, I keep myself productive. 
in addition to, like I mentioned, the daily calls I have with my team, just so we're planning and looking at what's up next. And then kind of just from my sanity, I actually do a lot of walking. (laughs) My daughter and I go outside and literally I probably go on probably two to three, 15, 20 minute walks a day. Mm. Aside from the fact that it helps her sleep, (laughs) Mm -hmm. it gives me fresh air and it gets me moving. Those are probably the top three things that kind of keep me going every day. I love that. And, you know, for some of you listening, you may want to, you know, take some of those ideas for yourself. But I love the part about getting outside because a lot of us, especially, you know, in the in the building and grinding phase, a lot of our listeners also have full time jobs and they're building a business on the side and they're trying to be as productive and effective as possible. And we forget how important those breaks are. You could try, what's the term? It's like after a certain point, I remember when I was having my full-time job and working past, you know, 2 a.m. That was like the the point of diminishing returns. Like if I tried to do anything past 2 a.m., it was like, okay, it's going to be gibberish at this point. So I should probably just go to sleep. I I never took breaks. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I remember that too, especially when I was doing part time and, and then doing my business full time. I was just going, going, going. I could sit at my kitchen table for hours mm-hmm. just working. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of just was like, this isn't what I left my job for. Mm-hmm. I didn't leave my job to be able to, to do this all day. Yeah. Just getting that fresh air kind of helps you revive and like see see something new again. Mm-hmm. Yes. I know that I'm not in a good place when I haven't seen, you know, seen the sunshine outside for a while. And it's like, oh, it's warm outside. And we're be like, yeah, that's what happens when you go outside. <laughs> you, you feel the sun. Yeah. It's like, okay. It's funny. My husband, my husband will come home and say, so this was before he'd say, so have you been outside today? And I'm like, you know, I was thinking about doing that. But he's like, no, let's go for a walk. It's like, okay. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. So important. So important. So tell me, you know, you've talked about, you know, your journey and and how you've gotten where you are. Like, I know so much of your business is based on your own strengths, but have there been any books that you have read that have really motivated you along your journey that you can share? One of your favorites? Yeah. My favorite book my favorite business book is called Built to Sell. Mm -hmm. And it's how to create a business that can thrive without you. Mm -hmm. What's funny is it's a lot of what I do, but this book, I I read it probably four times now because it just helps me think again on my business, on how I work with clients and just how to get better. Mm -hmm. Because it really talks about hiring and training the right team. Also how important processes are. Because believe it or not, I think it was probably, I would say three years ago, I had my own like breakdown in my business due to team and processes. And for me, it was really because the processes in the team kind of you start at from zero to say 50,000 is not going to be the same team and processes that take you from there to six figures and multiple six figures. And I realized that kind of the hard way. I was literally on the train back to London from Paris and I got an email from my client, very unhappy and literally lost thousands of dollars while I was on vacation. And I'm like, this is not going to work. We've got to change this. And that's when I, this book came into my life. Cause it's like, while I don't want to sell my company, I'm not at a point of thinking about selling, but I do want to be able to step away from it and mm-hmm. have it work while I'm not there. Yeah. So that that's when this book became like it for me. And I read it over and over again. <laughs> right. I, I actually don't think I have that one. I'm looking at my library and I'm like, hmm, I don't have that one. <laughs> so I'm going to have to add that one to my list as well, because that's where, where we are too. I mean, you've done so much. You've gotten to seven figures in revenue just with, you know, a very small team and contractors. But now it's like, Rosetta, you can't have your hand in everything. And I like having my hand in everything. And it is that mindset. It was a big mindset shift and, you know, kind of reading about the importance of it and how it's going to work. That's like helping me let go because there's so many different stages of letting go. It's more than it's one thing to let someone, you know, manage your email. And it's another thing (laughs) to let someone manage your, your entire business, which is what I would love to have someone do. 
Right. So thank you for that book recommendation. I don't think we've gotten that one on the show. So we'll add that to our show notes as well. There's so much that you learned over your time of being an entrepreneur and also, you know, in your career as well. For for the woman who is listening and she really, you know, likes this idea of, of outsourcing and delegating and all this, but she's just afraid of, of letting go. What's the number one piece of advice you would give her? And by her, I mean me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to keep it real, right? <laughs> hey, that's good. So it's something that I have to give and give and say to myself over and over again. And I feel like it didn't click for me until I heard it from probably one of the most important people in my life, which is Mm -hmm. my husband. Mm -hmm. He says to me, you don't ask for help. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm queen of team development. I Mm -hmm. love to help people get help. What do you Mm -hmm. mean? I don't ask for help. So we had this whole moment of you need to ask for support, especially since I've had my daughter. It's like, I think I can do everything. I can do everything at home myself. I can do everything in my business myself. And in reality, it doesn't have to be so hard. Mm-hmm. You can ask for help and there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I need I need a little bit of support. Same thing with people on your team. I need you to run the meeting today or I need you to get this site up in a week. Mm-hmm. Like ask for what you want. Speak for what, like what you really mean. Even at home, like, like I had to ask my husband to come home early because I had stuff that I needed to get done in my business and my daughter just would not take a nap today mm-hmm. and it was okay to ask. Mm-hmm. So the one thing I'll say is don't be afraid to ask for support. Don't be afraid to ask for the help mm-hmm. because there's no way, there's no reason why I should say you have to do it all by yourself. It's easier when you ask for help. Yeah. It totally is. And I think, you know, for so many of us, it's, we've got the type A personality. We've got the (laughs) perfectionist thing going on. We've got, we got all those things that make us successful going on. And at the same time, we've got cultural things too, that I think Mm -hmm. is so important for us to just kind of be gentle with ourselves and understand that, you know, if you were taught to do it all on your own, that you can't depend on anybody, that you got to be, you know, twice as good as a white person because you're a black Mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. those things are ingrained in us. And I've noticed for myself that it's a mindset shift that I've had to make over and over again and a lot of journaling and also therapy and really getting through and getting over like, okay, those are the things that you were taught, but that's not how you have to live your life. You don't have to try to do it all just because your grandmother did it all and your mother did it all. And now (laughs) they're sickly. Like my grandmother, she's not in good health. And I think that we should definitely be gentle with ourselves about where we are and how we got here, but then also listen to people like you and see how we can make changes in our lives that will affect future generations as well. Yeah, no, it's very true because I was raised by a single mom who I saw my whole life and still see her doing everything herself. Mm -hmm. She refuses to ask for help. And she was raised by my aunt who did it all by herself. Mm -hmm. So it's like a chain of things. It is generation. And it's from what I've seen that, why can't I do it myself? Mm -hmm. But it's funny because it's just like, you don't have to. You really don't have to. And I try to get get it through to my mother as well. It's like, I can help you, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm I'm your daughter. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. yeah. So I'm all for Mm -hmm. everyone getting support. (laughs) Yes. And especially at home. Like at home, uh, the first person that helped me with my business was a cleaning service that was really before I ever hired anybody (laughs) was like, I need help. You know, I can't work a full-time job and build this business and keep this house clean. I know that, you know, my grandma would be horrified (laughs) that I'm not cleaning my own house, (laughs) but I just can't. And, you know, I'd rather pay someone else with the money that I'm making to clean my house. And even now today, my aunt, you know, we were living in a four bedroom place and my aunt was like, oh, that's a lot of rooms to clean. And I was like, I'm not the one cleaning them. She was like, oh, I can't believe you're not cleaning, you know, your own house. So it's still this thing. Like we, we have to see where those beliefs come from sometimes too. And then be like, really, are you really building a six figure business and trying to clean your own house, speak and span every day? It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. <laughs> Well, this has been just a wonderful conversation and the way that you present the possibility to us for, you know, having a more abundant life by getting our systems in in place is really wonderful. And 
I know that a lot of people will want to stay in touch with you. So how can they do that? How can we get more of your wisdom? Yes. Well, I'd love to offer a free gift, which is a short video training because I know we all don't have hours on end. So I created a short video training for your community. And it's really three mistakes to avoid when training your team so that it'll save you time and money. Mm -hmm. And you can get that. Uh, SaniaWilliams.com backslash HBW. Beautiful. SaniaWilliams.com slash HBW. And we will put that link in the show notes as well. When you guys go to happyblackwoman.com, are you able to see all of the resources that Sanaya recommended? So thank you for that generous gift. I know that so many ladies listening will be very happy to have that training. Well, thank you again tonight for coming on the show. I think, you know, the the women that brought us together to serve the women listening, it's just a beautiful cycle of sisterhood. I appreciate your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. This was great. Awesome. All right, ladies, there you have it. Sanaya Williams talking about systems and building your team. But she is not the only expert we have had on the show. You can go back and listen to all of our previous episodes by going to happyblackwoman.com, click on podcast, and at your fingertips will be a wealth of information, resources, and knowledge given so generously by all of our guests over the past year and a half. And it's all free, 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 free. So get yourself some training, get yourself some inspiration at happyblackwoman.com on the podcast tab. And until next time, have a beautiful day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Happy Black Woman podcast. If you want all the show's notes from today's episode, go to happyblackwomanpodcast.com. Plus, we'll send you a copy of Rosetta's free life mapping workbook. We look forward to empowering you next time. And until then, do something this week that makes you happy.